welcome back. We're 10 minutes to tip off for a men's game. It's been a great day so far, and it's the last one to come up. It's Kurt Kitt. How are we feeling, last one? Oh, I'm feeling excited, you know. It's, it's been a few hours we've been here now. We've had the contest, we've had the women's game. Now it's time for the men's game. And, you know, just like the women's game, there's going to be so many great athletes showing up for this one. Yeah, it's going to be a good sign. We've seen these boys, they've done the three-point contest, they've done the dunk contest. They've showcased those skills. They were mightily impressive, and now we get to see them put it all together in a match. I think they're going to show off their skills. I think there's going to be a bit of flair going on. I, I get that feeling as well, definitely. Yeah. I mean, we just seen Tywell, unfortunately, not playing in the actual game. Yeah, but we do have the three-point champion, Jordan May, who will be in that. He did say in his interview earlier after his three-point victory, he was maybe going to go for a logo shot here and now. He may have a bit of fun, and he's saying how good the vibe is and that everyone's going to be trying to show off their skills a bit. Yeah, yeah, I think I heard him mention that he was going to try a, a three-point from the logo. Yeah, yeah. Like that. So that could be interesting to see whether or not he makes it. You know, it's another thing. But I'll, I'll, back him, I'll, I'll back him. I'll back him on a logo <laughs> I'll shot. I'll be very impressed with The way he was shooting earlier, I'll back him doing that, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, but, you know, other, other players, guys, a whole lot of great players we spoke earlier on. Team Johnson, we've got, what, three, I'm oh, sorry, two Apple Storm players yeah. and three Thunder players. Yeah, I think that Hemelstorm matchup with Johnson and his teammate Sam Newman. Sam Newman, best assister in the league. I think he's going to. We saw in the women's game having people that can pass the ball around and assist is so crucial because it brings that team together and that chemistry. And when people haven't played each together much, which these guys haven't, as they've just been <laughs> gelled together in the last couple of days. Someone like Sam Newman is going to be really important just to fire that ball around, find someone open and get a clean shot away. Yes, yeah, it's, it's no coincidence that Taylor Johnson decided with his first pick that he wanted to bring, you know, Sam Newman with him. Yeah. As you say, his, you know, the leading assist on that team. And then as for the Worthing Thunder players as well, we've got Andre Arasol in the game, who's, you know, one defensive player of the year. So now two time defensive player of the year. Somebody's very well known around Sonnen as well, so he used to play for the Kestrels. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I'm, I'm liking Johnson's team personally. I, you also got the Kestrels pair, Kai Walker and the Kestrels captain, Elias Borman in that team. They seem to be, I, I th we won't know until we see, but I'm seeing maybe a bit more chemistry in that team than there could be over, the, over Whedon's team. But across the board, Everyone's a fantastic player here. Yeah, and you, and you talk about chemistry. Obviously, you know, Worthing Thunder did lose. I don't want to maybe, yeah. maybe hit a nerve, but they did recently lose in the final to Hemel Storm. I know that a lot of their, uh, couple of their players, you know, congratulated Hemel on their win. But it's going to be interesting seeing how those, those two sides, obviously top sides, but how they clicked the day after only a couple of weeks ago playing in the most important game of the season. 100%. Against each other. Yeah, 100%. There's, there's always a bit of rivalries, but they've got to be put, put to one side and they're going to play together and go ball out. And I think they mentioned earlier, it's the way that the teams have been picked as well, it's almost been split as a north versus south. Yeah. It has. If you, if you look at the lineups, if you look at where they're all from, it's almost a north versus south, and that may add to the tension almost against one another, kind of. It's yeah, definitely it might do. And, you know, we, like I said earlier, we wouldn't want it any other way. We, we don't just want to come here and obviously, yeah, we want to see the players having fun, smiling and laughing, but we also want to see them bring their A game. We, yeah. we want to see them being competitive. That's what they do best, and that's why they're in this game in the first place. Yeah, I don't doubt them, them bringing their A game. They're, we've seen them warming up now. They've been warming up for maybe the, since the dunk contest the last 20 minutes, and They've been hitting even more three points and even more dunks because they are getting ready to put on a show. It's going to be pretty awesome. And, um, yeah, I'm look, really looking forward to this one. Yeah, we, uh, we've spoken a bit about Taylor Johnson, his side. Now let's talk a little bit about Team Whelan. Because, as you mentioned, they have Jordan May, who won the three-point yeah. contest earlier. He's going to be feeling good. But then also another guard on their team, Josh Gademi, who had four 30-plus uh, point games this season. So yeah. he's going to be, you know, he's, he's going to be battling him for that big, you know, the top scorer. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, 100%. Kind of 
I, 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 I think the way I see it is maybe, maybe similar to the previous game. And I think just looking up to the commentary box, John may be ready. Yeah, I got a thumbs up. So, John, it's going to be another great game. How are you feeling? Well, at the moment, um, I'm feeling full because I've, I've just had uh, some pizza. But either way, it's going to be a fitting climax to the National Basketball League season, no doubt about it. And it's going to be an absolutely fantastic game here today. John Hobbs alongside Hemel Storm assistant coach Michael Darlow. Michael, welcome. And this is going to be a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> To it. My allegiances are with the purple, obviously. <laughs> uh, straight away. Yeah, I'm going to put that down straight away, but <laughs> really looking forward to a, a very talented All-Star game. There's stars all over the floor. Absolutely. And this is almost a North v South game, isn't it? As, you know, Hemel and Worthing are, are pretty much joining forces for this game against uh, Team Team Whelan, who have you know, Manchester players. There's a few Reading players in there as well. Team Newcastle. It's just all just you know the best celebrating the best of, of British basketball, the best of the, the National Basketball League. You know, two weeks ago we had the uh, playoff final, which was a fantastic spectacle, and now it culminates in an all-star game you know, with an all-star cast. Absolutely. When when you saw the um, interview when Taylor was picking his team, I couldn't believe he was pulling out Worthing names. So I was like, what is going on? <laughs> um, but yeah, it does make for an interesting team. I'm interested to see how Dan is going to start. Is he going to go with the two Hemel guys and mm. the three Worthing players? I don't know. But either way, there is going to be stars on the floor. Absolutely. So we are getting ready about three minutes away until tip-off here. And it, as you say, it will be interesting to see who the starting fives are. We've been tinkering with who our, who our starting fives are going to be. So for Team Whelan, it'll be Joshua Gademi, Troy Cracknell, Raheem May Thompson, Jordan May, and of course, Jordan Whelan leading the way there. And for Team Johnson, it'll be Andre Arasol, Hafiz Abdul, Sam Newman, Taylor Johnson, and Orlan Jackman. It's a Hemel Worthing starting lineup pretty much just as you predicted i actually thought seth hall might have snuck into that starting five so as usual the coach beats the commentator <laughs> as the teams are being uh, introduced and as the teams are being introduced you know the season ends and for you guys you know history the second team in the national basketball league to finish the season unbeaten scooping all the trophies in the bounce but you, you did have your, you know, your, your rough parts, your stumbles. Teams have pushed you all the way. Loughborough took you to overtime, of course. Worthing pushed you all the way in three of the four games played. It's been an exciting season, but 41 and 0, what an accomplishment! Yeah, it was a truly amazing season. And uh, Drew used uh, an analogy for towards the end of the season about it taking a village, mm. um, and it really was all about that. And, the group of guys we had this year were the most collective group of players we've ever had. Um, and that really did put us through the tough moments. But for a way, I thought it was done. I really thought it was done. I thought, that's it. The, uh, the streak is over. Hakeem's uh, girlfriend actually turned the tail off because she thought we lost. <laughs> and texted Hakeem saying, uh, oh, good luck in the next game. Um, so that kind of sums up what situation we're in right there. But yeah, a great year. And so pleased we could thank all of our incredible volunteers and fans. Mm. Of course, uh, league MVP Aaron Rye unavailable for this game. Of course, he jetted back home to Canada as soon as this game, as soon as the season ended. David Moyer for Worthing Thunder also unavailable as well as uh, I think there was a few others as well. But uh, it's either way, <laughs> it's about who we've got here. Seth Suave was the other one. Yeah, that was yeah. the name I was thinking of. Excuse me. It's been a long day. So right. as Team Blue gets uh, introduced, and on paper, probably the underdogs, you would say, due to the fact that Hemel and Worthing, the top two in the league, are all on the same team and in the starting five. But 
There's a lot of firepower in there. There's a Reading 1-2 combination, Jeremiah Jenkins and Troy Cracknell that lead the way. Jordan Whelan can score anywhere on the floor, can't he? Um, and then you've got Victor Ollerin who you know, can jump out of the gym. <laughs> huge impacts for their own individual clubs. Jenkins and Cracknell, unbelievable for, mm. for the Reading throughout the season. When we played him in the semi-final, unbelievable performances from the pair of them. <laughs> You're a big fan, aren't you? <laughs> May Thompson, led the leagues in blocks this year. Uh, great teammate and uh, does the little things that the stat sheet doesn't mm. really realise. <laughs> Been around the game for a while. Yeah, it's going to be a great matchup For sure, and Six all-star, six two-time all-stars appearing here today. Hafiz Abdul, Ronald Blaine, Andre Arasol, Taylor Johnson, Victor Ollerin and Jace Harrison all making their second rebound all-star appearance. Of course, Hafiz Abdul went for 34 points, five three-pointers last year, but he was bettered by Taylor Johnson's incredible 37 points, including a game-winning three-pointer from the wing, just right where Kai Walker is right at this moment. And Victor Ollerin, of course, he chipped in with 12 points on 5 for 7 shooting in the first All-Star game. But um, it's just you know, a thrilling climax to a great season. We're two minutes away from it and should be a lot of fun. But one thing we have to mention, and we mentioned it earlier on, a near sellout crowd, yeah. but it is officially now a sellout crowd for this all-star game here at Solent Sports Complex. That is an incredible achievement. Yeah, it's great to see, and Chris has done a fantastic job to make this event happen. Um, you look around right now, everyone's here supporting British basketball, mm. but it's also nice to see a few people wearing their home colours as well. Seeing yeah. a few red in tops, seeing a few hemel tops. It's really nice that we've all come together at the end of the year to celebrate a great season, and, and what a showcase to finish it off. Absolutely. I'm just fascinated to see who are going to take the shots. <laughs> Everyone on this team takes the shots for their team, so who's going to take the shots today? That was one of the uh, key points that uh, the one-time rebound All-Stars head coach, Julian Stanley, actually put last year. He was trying to balance who will actually take the big <laughs> shots and who will take uh, the, who will run the offences, and it just ended in a conundrum of different rushed offences because each player just wanted to take it all in themselves. But, um, Great atmosphere here at Solent Sports Complex as you see the team blue getting their last second instructions from what is, has been a very busy head coach on Ben Stanley today. Dan Watts of the Nottingham Hoods on the other end and Ben Stanley um, assisted today by Plymouth City Patriots guard LBC Dusha who is here today. LBC. There's a few BBL players in attendance um, here as well today, but uh, also a lot of WNBL and uh, NBL players from uh, across the league. I see a few Hemel tops in, in the crowd as well, which is awesome to see. It's all the kids at the front. Absolutely. They're all having a good time, aren't they? really enjoying themselves. That's what it's all about. And yet we're focused on the players on the screen. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm interested to see what Dan and Ben will plan for this game in terms of what what stylish. The very first offense of last year's uh, all rebound all-star game was Taylor Johnson drilling a three really. <laughs> within the first five seconds. So maybe that might happen, I don't know. But um, all-star games traditionally all across uh, Europe and the world are fun spectacles, you can say, but towards the latter areas of the game, you know, particularly in late in the fourth quarter, the action does get a little more serious, a little more competitive. It's was a very competitive women's all-star game late earlier on today where Team Clary defeated Team Al-Shabri. So I've just seen Sam and Taylor 
do the little, t look, see they're talking to Orlan as well. So he's telling <laughs> Orlan to tip the ball to him and Taylor will run by the, behind the back of Cracknell. Look, they're right there. That. That's brilliant. I love to the see The first that. play has already been done. I'm annoyed they've told Orlan about it. But yeah, I reckon Orlan will tip it to Sam and Sam will run it, uh, Taylor will run in that layup. They've, they've Straight the away, Hemel's main <laughs> offensive <laughs> set has been has <laughs> been broken. That was the that was the actual that was the reason for forty one and zero. Really, yeah, it was that right, it yeah. was that one play. <laughs> Drew's gonna kill me. Have said anything. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, here we go. So Tim Brown, veteran official. Getting ready, and Orlan Jackman, Raheem May Thompson will jump it up, and straight away, oh. it was gonna go to Sam Newman, <laughs> but Taylor gone, he was gone. <laughs> Taylor just, yeah, he was off to the races, wasn't he? But uh, no opening score for Taylor Johnson in back-to-back -back rebound All Stars yet. Certainly not in quick succession. So here we go. Oh, there's the lob. There's the lob and Cracknell <laughs> with the finish. Ben Stanley's well happy with that. Look at him. That's brilliant. Ben Stanley with a big smile on his face. As Jordan May with the assist. So is this another drawn up play? Can't do plays in all star there's games. Lob. Two lobs, two lobs <laughs> here is Gademi. And here is Whelan pulling up for three. And Johnson with the loose ball. And here comes Team Johnson with Johnson. Newman right in the corner. He shot so well from three this year. One of his standout performances, especially from the corner as well. Mm. The attention that Taylor, Aaron and Akeem got, and then he was able to knock down the shot was a huge part of our success. 40 and Troy Cracknell Absolutely. Doing what he does best. Pull up jump shot. 44% from downtown this season for Sam Newman as Arasol puts up a three. Of course, a former Solent Kestrels man. Played on this court many a times as Johnson nearly stole it. In fact, does get the ball as Raheem May Thompson lost the ball. I wonder how these refs are going to call this game. What a difficult game because you want to you want to create some highlights. You don't want it to be stop start. It's a difficult one to manage. But. Absolutely, it was a conversation myself, Annie, and Chrissy had in the uh, women's game. Of, okay. You know how do you how do you referee it? Do you let the play go or do you you call it as you see it? And, Referees did call a lot of fouls in that women's game as Abdul puts up a three from the wing and is off the back iron. Troy Cracknell to Whelan. Whelan, good defense there from Abdul. Gudemi for three, misses everything. Newman says thank you very much. And here comes Sam Newman. Jackman. Jackman a three. Jackman gets it. Of course, he knows these rings very well. Another great year, shooting 42.5% from three. He is not going to hesitate. When he has that much space, it is going to go up. Cracknell, no hesitation himself, but misses everything with that. So as you would expect from an all-star game, it's quite loose. You know, it's both teams chucking up some threes, getting to know each other a little bit early doors. Six to five in favor of Team Johnson. Here is Johnson, good defense from May Thompson, but Johnson with the finish. That's classic Taylor Johnson. Hesitated a little bit on the trap, waited for the defender to separate, and then he drove again. Jordan May with the miss two, and here comes Abdul, who had 34 points last year in the All-Star game, as Orlan Jackman with a scoop layup and gets it to go. <laughs> I think a young Orlan might have uh, might have dunked that one, but still a stylish play. And a steal there as Whelan's pass finds no one. This is good. But Andre Arasol, Newman a three, gets yes. it. Yes, Sam Newman. Second three timeout for already. Sam Newman. Two a two from downtown, and a quick timeout has been called by coach Dan Watts. Team Johnson up ten to four. <laughs> If you're the Hemel fans looking at you and you giving your <laughs> nod of celebrate. approval. I didn't celebrate. <laughs> I'm here for both teams. Of course you are. A great end, a great uh, start though to the game for Team Johnson up 13 to 4 actually with 7-14 remaining. And as said, both teams just getting so loose, like getting, getting to, yeah, to know each other a bit. And so far yeah, Team yeah, Johnson has been high from the field. Okay. Okay. I think it's a bit more than uh, that. Actually, uh, I think the live stats might be a little bit behind. But uh, hell alive, now the uh, scoreboard has actually changed. It's not 14 to 3. But well, either way. <laughs> I think they originally had a crack. Second yeah. shot, now it's a 3, but it was actually a 2. So 
So that's how it should Still, be. should be four points. Yeah, it should be four. So Cracknell's on four. So it should be four for Whelan. Yeah, it should be 13 to four. Look at this lot. Look at this lot on the floor right now. They're scheming something. What's being drawn up? <laughs> so we have three Worthing players, two Hemel players on the floor. I mean, that starting five alone would cause some major damage, not just in the uh, National Basketball League, but it could also do some damage in the British Basketball League, you have to say. <laughs> so... Team Johnson leads 13 to 4. The scoreboard is correct. The live stats are correct now. And away we go with 7.09 remaining in the first. Here is Cracknell. Gudemi drives at Jackman. Step back two. And Johnson tips it to Abdul. Abdul straight away a three. And that misses everything. And Team Blue get the ball. That's Kademi's bread and butter, what happened down there. I hope he doesn't come away from taking that shot again. Isolation on the wing, he got that a lot for the hoods. Hope he, I hope he continues to take that shot. Here we go. And Kademi gets it again, and misses again off the feed from Whelan. Here comes Arasol. Can't go on Arasol, Arasol for three, and that misses everything. And as you say, yeah, you know, when you go under a screen with Arasol coming up, he's always going to shoot that three yeah he's got no hesitation and absolutely 34 percent three-point shooter for the season andre arasol in his first season with the thunder he does so much he did so much for the thunder this year his offense his defense is superb and rightly got some recognition in the end of season awards inside taylor johnson again and that's the problem you have when you're guarding taylor johnson a lot of teams try and face guard him and then the backdoor cut is always wide open, so they've got that easy two from the feed from Newman. Absolutely, one of the best off-ball movers in the game, Taylor Johnson, as Raheem May Thompson misses the fadeaway jumper. Newman, <laughs> big three for Sam Newman. And Troy Cracknell comes up with it, and away comes Here we go. Whelan. Whelan with the finish. The first, you could say our first dunk of the game. Yeah, and that'd be... That'd <laughs> Looked be like a layup, right? <laughs> that'd be good for Team Whelan, because... Team Johnson want to get out in transition, so if they can make it a half-court game, they might limit some of the easy shots they've had previously. So like this right now. Here is Abdul driving, going glass, gets it to go, and a foul. Bit of a continuation of play, but referee Tim Brown judges that to be a three-point play. So Afiz Abdul will go to the line, and Afiz Abdul was actually going to be subbed out by teammate Ronald Blaine. Instead, Orlan Jackman will take a seat, and Ronald Blaine, who didn't play at 100% in the playoff final, but uh, still you know, managed a good game uh, against you guys at Hemel. So both Jackman and Gademi have come off the floor now and been replaced by smaller guards. So There's Jace see, Harrison you see there and yeah. Jeremiah Jenkins into the game. Yeah. So you might see a bit more space under the basket with no bigs occupying that. Of course, Jeremiah Jenkins, a clutch three-point shooter, especially in the corner, and there he is now waiting for the pass, but Raheem May Thompson doesn't need him. Here is Blaine. I can't believe Blaine, <laughs> Blaine is playing after that kick King final where he dislocated his finger. <laughs> Sums him up as a person, really. Absolutely. Takes it up and got playing again. And as, play. as said, wasn't at 100% in the playoff final either. You know, it was only at 50% after spraining his ankle in the semi-final win over Derby. That's what he gives to your team, though. Dives on loose balls, doesn't really matter the environment, doesn't really matter how he's feeling, he'll give it his all. And into the game for the first time, Seth Hall of the Nottingham Hoods, and what a season he has had. 20 points, five rebounds, four assists, shooting around 44% from the field. And even though Nottingham didn't get to the playoffs, you know, not uh, an improvement on the season before where they were in the top four, but... You know, what a season he had under Dan Watts. Yeah, and he had the license to shoot, and he really did shoot it. As soon as he stepped over that halfway line, we had to pick up and find someone, mm. and I think the same thing will happen today. He really, his reputation alone creates so much space for the Hoods to attack, and I'm sure the same thing will happen with these boys. And here he is marking Jenkins, Whelan, stolen, nearly stolen by Newman, and Whelan misses everything with his three-point attempt. Here is Newman. Back to Johnson, the Hemel one-two punch. And I think we need to shut Taylor Johnson misses everything. And <laughs> we need to shut that fire exit. That's two <laughs> air balls now. 
and Ronald Blaine. Worthing Football Club are actually competing in the Vanarama <laughs> Southern League uh, playoffs today. And uh, I know Ronald Blaine was uh, a bit of a supporter there as Jenkins hits a three. Here is Newman, finds Johnson a three, gets it to go from pretty much the same <laughs> spot where he won it last year for, it was Team Blue he was for last year, so now a switching of allegiances. 22-11 in favor of Johnson. As Cracknell misses there and here go. comes Seth Hall. And Seth Hall, it's a good idea from Seth Hall and Sam Newman couldn't read the pass. Sam Newman had altitude sickness. He's normally the one bringing the ball up. He's never out there that far in transition. He's normally hovering waiting for the ball to come back. And here is Jenkins. Right, a fantastic season with the Rockets, along with this man, Troy Cracknell. He loves that pull-up. And there's a fair few Reading Rocket fans in attendance here today. It's only about a 50-minute drive as Blaine goes inside. He was looking for the dunk. Harrison, of course, had a great season with the Trailblazers. Here is Jenkins driving at Hall, blocked by Abdul. And here is Blaine for three. And Harrison with the rebound, and here comes Jenkins, <laughs> who is deciding not to drive at Blaine. Blaine eyed him up there. <laughs> here is Cracknell. To May Thompson. Both teams really scrappy at the moment as May Thompson gets it back again and misses at the second attempt. Yeah, they've got to be careful a little bit here, Team Whelan. 13 points already. There's so much scoring on the pink. They could push this lead even further. Entering the final three minutes as that will be a foot violation as Sam Newman's bounce pass to Taylor Johnson missed its mark as Elijah Bailey, Elias Portman and Kai Walker come into the game for the first time. Newman, Abdul... And Elijah Bailey had a great year for Loughborough this year. Johnson comes out. And yeah, Elijah Bailey, what a season he had with Loughborough. 20 points, leading the Riders to a, a very solid 15 and 11 season, despite, mm -hmm. you know, their injury woes. And there he is. There's Elijah <laughs> Bailey and the foul. And he had success in the Bucks competitions as well. Absolutely, yeah. Was just about to touch on that as well. You know, a great success away from the NBL as well. And, you know, Really good season in the Bucks League as well for Bailey as he now will go to the foul line. As Elias Pullman just lacing them up before the free throw. And Bailey makes good on his first three points of the game. Here is Olleren. Team Whelan got really small, so no, no obvious big on the floor. So let's see how that changes the way they play. Uh -oh. Walker, Walker yeah. with the finish. That's last year's dunk champion, right? Yeah. Reminded everyone he still got it. Olleren oh. doesn't get it to go. Whelan was nearly close to dunking it home himself. And there's Seth Hall Hall for three. Off the bank. Nearly banked it in. He was shooting that in the, in the and, beginning. Yeah, He's and Hall again. goes again. <laughs> he was going for back-to-back -back banks. Olleren stolen by Poorman. And now Elijah Bailey with all the time in the world. And we go to our final two minutes of the first quarter. Jenkins blistering speed lays it up and in. Reading Rocket fans loved that. He had a great start to the year, but in the second half he showed just how, just why he's been selected as an all-star. Bailey a three. Six quick points for Elijah Bailey. Well, eight points, excuse me, for Elijah Bailey. Here is Jenkins. Trying to put the moves on Hall. Hall not buying it. New um, Harrison a three. And Seth Hall comes up with it. And Blaine, in transition, <laughs> decides to just lay it up and in. His <laughs> and um, getting some boos amongst the Silent Sports Complex fans and 
his teammates. <laughs> As Walker with the strip, and here comes Bailey. Bailey, a pull up three, and that goes straight to Andre Gale into the game for the first time. Gale, of course, for the Manchester Magic. Olleren pulling the moves on Hall, fades away and misses the two. That's Gale a three, gets it. Whelan's done that so many times already in this game, getting after offensive boards and getting second chance opportunities. He was great at the, for the Bradford Dragons doing that and he's doing the same thing again right now. Here is, well, Hall was gonna go for it, but he missed the ball completely. Here is Gale in transition, looking for Olleren for the lob and here is Bailey, final 17 seconds of the first quarter. Shot clock is turned off and Elijah Bailey now putting the moves on Gale. Gale <laughs> driving, uh, stolen away by Whelan and Harrison, final seconds, that will count and it goes! <laughs> Victor Olleren on the buzzer, that should count. I think the referees are just gonna confer. In fact, they're actually going to the table. That should count. Basket and there gets. you go, there's the confirmation. <laughs> the crowd are happy. <laughs> and that ends the first quarter here at Solent Sports Complex. And Team Johnson leads 34 to 18 over oh, real, but what? Uh, Team Whelan. And I know mean, you, you can't see the, the comments that are coming onto the Rebound YouTube feed, but I will say that they are dominated by two particular people. Is it Aaron Ryan? Aaron Ryan might be one of them, <laughs> and Seth Suave is another one, yes. And Aaron Wright is a firm supporter of Team Whelan, I must say. Shots fired. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so, comments aside, um, right now, Taylor Johnson leading the way for his own team with nine points, and right now, Jeremiah Jenkins has five to lead the way for Team Willen, an entertaining first quarter, but one where, you know, it's the Hemel and Worthing one-two <laughs> punch right now, isn't it? I like the way, I like the way Chris has decided to do this at the end of the season. So you see like the NBA All-Star, they do it during the year, yeah. the guys aren't really competing. Whereas this is the end of the season, we're coming into the summer, and guys are competing hard, which is really good to see. Mm. Always gonna be very limited defense. <laughs> we, we already knew that, but they're playing hard. They're trying to get the highlight plays to the fans. That's all we can really ask Absolutely. for. Absolutely. But uh, at the same time, yeah, as you say, still very competitive for an all-star game. Ronald Blaine talking to a few of the fans in attendance. Of course, fans and players and coaches from <laughs> when around is the country. Blaine, when is Ronald Blaine not talking to the fans? <laughs> He's a man of the people. Here is <laughs> Bailey. Bailey with the lob was looking for Abdul, and I don't think Abdul was going to get that with three blue shirts around him. Of course, Abdul nearly broke one of our chairs during the dunk contest uh, a bit earlier on. <laughs> Here he is on the ball now, backing up Andre nice. Gale, the feed, and Horman misses the dunk attempt. Here is Olerin. Olerin pulls up for three, and that's in and out. Newman. Newman was looking for options, but slows it down. Beautiful pass nice, to Abdul, nice and Abdul move. misses the oh, finish. Lucky. I thought he got fouled a little bit there as well. Unlucky. Andre Arasol certainly thinks so. Here is Harrison. Jenkins. Reese Pinnock into the game for the first time for the Reading Rockets. Olleren a three, and Olleren misses everything. He'll keep shooting that though. He's got the confidence at Thames Valley. He had the confidence all year to do what he wanted on offense. And it's great to see him have such a breakout year. And some people might, if you're eager eyed, you might see that uh, Elias Pullman is wearing a jersey with T Rose instead of his second name. T Rose was uh, a dedication to a friend of his that got him into basketball. It's Jeremiah Jenkins shoots and scores from downtown. That takes Jenkins to eight points. Taylor's leading all scorers with nine, though. 
had didn't to even recognise he hardly scored. Had to get in the, the Hemel no. the Hemel thing again. <laughs> no, no. Well, you did say from the start, I'm going Team Pink all the yeah, way. I was so. honest, I was <laughs> Here is Newman. Hafiz also has a bit of a lesion with Hemel as well. Oh yeah, no, a he former played, Hemel he, player he, in his own right, especially he did half during the season with us. Yeah, especially during the lockout season. Here is Newman. Shot clock reset, and here is Blaine for two. He loves it, Blaine, doesn't he? This is Jenkins. That is his favourite spot, but misses it. And on the follow was Olleran. This event is for Ronald Blaine, isn't it? He's getting the crowd involved. He's getting his teammates involved. I it's also it. it's also for Elijah Bailey as well. He's getting a bit flashy at the moment. That's what we like to see, and that's what we want to see. I think that's what the fans want to see as well. As Jackman comes back in, and Fiz Abdul will take a seat. So Johnson's gone big now with Orlan on the floor. Team Whelan are still quite still quite small with their mm. lineup, so I reckon they'll start pumping it inside to Orlan. Jenkins, a from Jenkins, big three. No good on the follow, Ollerin. So Andre Gale's guarding him. Let's see what happens. Here is Newman with Suave and Rye booing from back home. Here is <laughs> Pullman. Pullman gets it nearly got it to go. That'll be on Reese Pinnock. That'll be his first foul. You notice how, since I commented, they've not commented once. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Have you blocked them? That's good. <laughs> I can't do that. No, that's a shame. <laughs> they were like it all year. Did it on Instagram. <laughs> did it on Twitter. Of course, Aaron Wright, a deserved league MVP this season. Just an incredible campaign for him and co-MVP alongside Taylor Johnson, who swooped you know, three of the four of their MVP awards available as... He was a pleasure to have around, Aaron. Uh, it's yeah. a shame he's listening right now, and I'm going to say some nice things about him. But he was an awesome player, but an awesome person. Absolutely. Uh, and a huge reason for our success this year. Incredibly humble as well, is what I found about him. In the uh, it might have been brief, you. And brief might times. Have been to you. <laughs> I, I didn't speak to him. I spoke to him briefly a few times during the season. Here is Newman. Finds Bailey. Bailey fakes Pinnock that's, and gets in a mid-range jumper. That's Sam Newman at his best. Coming off a pick and roll, looking to pass to an open teammate. That's beautiful basketball right there. Jenkins, Jenkins loves it. Jenkins with the step back gets it's it to fire. go. He's Jeremiah Jenkins on fire right now. The Reading fans down below enjoying themselves. Three for six from downtown so far for Jeremiah Jenkins. They pulled it right back, Team Wheelands. Only an eight-point yeah, game, eight game now. Only an eight-point game now, and... It's Johnson coming back in, and Arisol. Jeremiah Jenkins leading all scorers right now with 11 points. First foul on Victor Olerin, and Elijah Bailey going back to the line as... So Andre Arisol comes back into the game, and Elias Poorman takes a seat. I always find this interesting, especially in an all-star game. If Bailey misses this free throw, he can't come off. So does he miss Yeah, no, it? exactly. Does, does he, he miss, miss on, on purpose? purpose? <laughs> Let's see. Otherwise, he's getting subbed. He's oh, he it. did. <laughs> That's smart. He knew what he was yeah. doing. Oh, and, and, no, there's, the, and anyway. there's the turnover. <laughs> they knew, each he's team, they, it's like they planned it. As Taylor Johnson comes in, and as you mentioned, Elijah Bailey will take a seat. You see as, Jordan May stepping on yeah, the floor Jordan as well. Yeah, Jordan May of Team Newcastle. Checking into the game. He shot a deep 40% of the shot from three this year. Absolutely. Off yeah. nine attempts a game. He was, li he was literally had the license to shoot as soon as he crossed that halfway line. A fantastic uh, shooter this season, a native of Troutdale, Oregon. And what a season he's had under Mark Elderkin at Team Newcastle, a team that were, you know, effectively rebuilding with the loss of mm -hmm. David Moyer, Ronald Blaine, and uh, Brandon Frederici and Nazobu Ramadan as well, if you want to include the Fab Four. <laughs> and uh, Jordan May has certainly stepped up for Team Newcastle, and there is veteran play personified oh, there from Orlan Jackman. And Josh Gudemi fell, was, <laughs> fell hook, line, and sinker for that. He did. That's something you, as a coach, you can see it in your face. Yeah. You're not a fan it's of that, are you? It's all Jackman. Like, <laughs> get your hands up. Come on. 
I say that Hakeem fell for it twice when we he played was him. gonna say oh yeah and that <laughs> yeah I wasn't happy about that use words I can't repeat right now <laughs> of course Hakeem Silla uh, another player who couldn't uh, be with us today at the rebound all-stars gave uh, his wife gave birth actually back in December mm -hmm. and Hakeem Silla traveled between London Hemel and Paris Everywhere. so he was a he was certainly a, a, a a good traveller this yeah. this season. Johnson, Team Johnson put a bit of a press on here. Ollerin, the extra pass, May for three. Uh, and Blaine with the rebound. Uh oh. And Tim Brown, I don't think, is playing for Team Pink. And <laughs> <laughs> and Ronald Blaine, the first person he is blaming is Orlan Jackman, yeah. who was the other side yes. of the court. <laughs> I think Arasol gave him a little remark there as well. I'll bring <laughs> the ball up next time. Pinnock to Gudemi. Nice. Gudemi oh, and another turnover. Back to turnovers. <laughs> the communication has been priceless so far <laughs> in this first half. It's an all-star game. I'm sure we can let them off, but if you were a coach, you'd be absolutely screaming right now. Well, I spoke to Dan and Ben before the game. I was like, how are you going to coach this game? And they were like, you don't really. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you in the fourth quarter they might. I think that's when they have their most fun is sort of after a timeout yeah. or stoppage of play where they can draw something up, get some back screens, get some lobs to the hoops, and that's when we, we can have some fun with it. I was just about to say Taylor hasn't scored in a while. He's due to at least take a shot. He had a, back, he had a post yeah. up there. So I'm expecting a Johnson shot coming soon. Well, only one player from the women's game didn't register a point, so it okay. was fairly well spread out. We're down to just the final four in players that haven't scored so far. That is Andre Arasol, Hafiz Abdul, Josh Gudemi and Jordan May. So with their scoring prowess, I'm sure they will register at least a point sooner than later. Gale, a three. Yeah, it won't take long for these elite scorers to start stepping up. Dre Day in Southampton. Newman looking to respond. And Gudemi with the rebound. That miss will delight Aaron and Seth, I'm sure. <laughs> uh -oh. All the way. Oh, oh missed dunk. <laughs> By Reese Pinnock, probably one of the quickest players in the league. Johnson. Johnson a three. Nice. And inside it goes. And Blaine again with the finish. Great find from Orlan Jackman. And a few of the players on the bench again wanted a dunk. I think that's what Orlan hoped for when Blaine was bringing the ball up the floor, but <laughs> quite the opposite happened. <laughs> 4.22 remaining. Team Johnson leads 43-36 as Andre Gale and Victor Ollerin take a seat. Raheem May-Thompson, Troy Cracknell come in. Fis Abdul and Seth Hall into the game for Team Pink. And Blaine and I think Newman take a seat as <coughs> there he the is. floater there from Johnson. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Right on cue. First field goal since the first quarter for Taylor Johnson. Cracknell. And that came off a foot. From here, it actually looked like it came off uh, a bit higher, but I'm not an official. I don't know. <laughs> I've just got word that officially every seat in the house has been taken up. All 450 seats have been taken up and now using extra seats along the baseline near where the media table is. So what a fantastic accomplishment. And we had a near full house for the women's game as well, which was brilliantly received. Here is Johnson. Tough move from Taylor Johnson. Doesn't get the layup to go. Here is Cracknell. A bit of be room inside. In uh oh, here we go. And here is Jackman. Jackman chooses not to <laughs> dunk it home. Oh, <laughs> and who led the booze? It was Ronald Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the booze were actually from the Worthing end as well. And the Worthing fans down here as well. Yeah. Oh dear. Uh oh. Cracknell, or excuse me, Pinnock. And Reese Pinnock, who had a great season with the Rockets, as Johnson with a burst of speed. He's so good at that. He's so good at attacking off the move and finding those little narrow gaps and finishing at the rim. Season high, 41 points for Taylor Johnson this season in the 
National Cup final in an incredible display against Derby in Manchester. Nice. Arasol with the reverse. That Mottis hasn't called a timeout yet. I wouldn't be surprised if he calls one soon to have a bit of fun with a play or something. Cracknell with the up and under. Play really increasing and really getting quick. And what a year he had for the Reading Rockets. Oh, fantastic. Hall and Gudemi with the rebound. They started off very slow, did the Reading Rockets. They lost, like, I think it was one of their first five encounters before really rebounding well, no pun intended, obviously <laughs> being an all-star game, and got to the playoffs. Of course, an absolute classic against the Hemel Storm in Hemel. What's that? On the follow was there's that, Jackman. There's that block from Raheem May Thompson. Averages two a game. What an unbelievable defender. And there is May Thompson at the other end. Final two minutes, 51-42 in favour of Team Johnson. Arasol. Abdul likes to shoot at the top. And Gudemi with the rebound. Shoot May, that, May. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he wanted to shoot that. Gudemi will shoot it. In and out. And Seth Hall and Hafiz Abdul fighting for it. Stolen, though, by Gudemi. And Jackman oh. gets it back again. Uh-oh. And oh, Taylor Johnson with the miss layup. <laughs> Arasol walks back for three and hits. <laughs> so we're just missing Afis, Seth, Josh, and uh, May now, and that will take all the scorers off. That's been the, the really plus point of this rebound, All Stars. Everyone has been involved, everyone's gotten after it. Cracknell answers for three. <laughs> Final minute of the half. Andre's laughing. He knew he knew he shouldn't have given him that much space. <laughs> Johnson dancing around. Here is Hall. Oh, nice. Hall with the fake and May Thompson with the rebound. Ball is batted around. May Thompson still has it. And a foul has been called. And nearly, it's actually, I think that's the first team foul on Team mm. Johnson compared to four from Team Whelan. We've got an interesting sort of opportunity here because team team will and have the ball 44 seconds on the clock do they go for a quick shot try and get a two for one let's see they've got to here is cracknell 20 second differential there between shot clock and game <clears throat> clock there's cracknell there for is. three but he misses it and it'll go out of bounds so now that question can be reverted back to team johnson Still, a lot of time left. They're trying to get Seth that bucket, coming off a stagger. <laughs> Here is Kai Walker, beautiful move, nearly got it to go. And Kai Walker will go to the foul line. And you know, for players who have like massively improved this year, Kai Walker certainly one of them. Of course, played predominantly for the Div 2D team the season before playing sparring minutes on a, a stacked Solent team that year and has really stepped up and become a leader for this year's Division One team. Yeah, absolutely. Madison, Madison and Paulman got a lot of attention and Bessard. But Walker did the little stuff that other people, um, other people who know the game really well appreciated. Offensive boards, great defense and always guarded the opponent's best player. So here's Sefo on the ball. Will he, so will he get final, his first points yeah, the We're game? down to the final seconds of the half. Seth Hall slowing it down. Oh, are they trying to try? It's like a big moment, this, <laughs> as Seth Hall almost being oh. double teamed by Whelan and Gudemi. Abdul, the extra pass. Johnson, oh. not, not enough time. And the, that, that cheer came from the Worthing fans, but that's no, no comment here. But either way, the end of a really entertaining first half. Team Johnson leads 55-47. Taylor Johnson leading the players with 13 points. A couple of players on 11 points. Uh, Elijah Bailey off the bench.
for Team Johnson and on Team Whelan's side, 11 for Jeremiah Jenkins. I think it's everything we asked for. High scoring, highlights, lots of different mm. people getting different touches and players when they do come on the floor are able to show their talent. So I don't think we could have asked for much more. As a coach, probably have asked for a bit more defence, but we already knew that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, expect to see another high scoring affair in the second half. Well, you could see, might see that in the second half, I guess. You know, it gets a little more competitive, a little bit more physical as, as the game goes on, but you never know what will happen. So it's half time here at the Solent Sports Complex. Quite a lot for two university students who worked so hard. Uh, Kip, it's all yours. 47.55 in favour of Team Johnson. Yeah, you said it, 55.47. Uh, two Team Johnson here in Great half. Yeah, it was uh, pretty awesome to see. Man, these guys moved that ball around so fast. They are flying up and down the court, just putting on a show. Like, they seem, seem to uh, like be a bit scrappy at times, missing a few shots, but the scoreboard doesn't say, say that at all. No, not at all. I mean, almost every player, just like with the women's game, almost every player has yeah. posted points of some kind, whether that's, you know, even free throws or, you know, from mid-range, whatever it is. Yeah, 100%. Everyone's contributing. And two of the guys who I'm shocked they haven't scored are... Uh, Jordan May and Seth Hall, two three-point specialists who we saw in the three-point contest earlier. Jordan May won it, Seth Hall narrowly missed out on the final, but it was awesome as well. Both of them haven't hit, hit yet. They've been having their three-pointers, but I think they used them all up earlier. Yeah, maybe, maybe, you know. Uh, yeah, maybe they, maybe they burnt out a little bit or something, yeah. but hopefully they have a what? Another few minutes of their halftime break, yeah. so if they make the most of that, maybe they come out shooting in the second half. I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm, I'm sure, sure they that will. these guys are too good not to hit at least one three-pointer. <laughs> yeah. Like we were saying earlier, there was a reason why they were chosen for exactly. the three-point contest. So, yeah. Come on. But now, it, yeah, it's been awesome. Johnson, Johnson's team got out to a massive lead at one point. I thought it was maybe the start, of the end of the first quarter, start of the second quarter, and I thought. Wow, OK, this could get uglier. It was, I think it was 31-13 at some point. I uh, thought, ooh, OK, we're looking on a blowout. But credit to Whelan's team. They've come back incredibly well. Jenkins has led the way with Cracknell. Cracknell's here, a few threes. They've played really well. But it, Johnson's team early on, they did get out pretty fast. Yeah, they did. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. They, like you say, I thought it was going to get a bit ugly. I thought they were maybe pulling away. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then we saw, like, like we said earlier, you know, if, if it got like that, then it would bring out the competitiveness. 100%, you know? Whether yeah. it's, if it's If it's too big a gap or too close, it's going to get competitive. Yeah. You know, you don't want to get shown up at an All-Star game. I think as soon as that point he has starts to go, the losing team always goes, all right, we're not just going to be throwing three pointers on fun now. We're going to close that gap, and then we'll suffer an air battle again. That's how it's kind of worked, because Johnson's team did get out a bit, and they were like, oh, OK, let's have a bit of fun now. Um, the, you know, the gap is now down to eight points. We didn't seem how they have closed it. So. Yeah, like you say, you know, the, these guys are here to have fun, but what they consider fun is shooting threes, is, you know, making dunks. They want to win. Winning is fun for them. So. Yeah. We've, we've got to expect to see more of this in the second half. Although, speaking of three-pointers, I think, you know, we have been somewhat surprised to see, like, say, Jordan May and um, Seth Hall yet to score. But still, even the rest of the players, the three points have, you know, not really been dropping just yet. No, no, but they, they will come. And what, I've, what we also said pre-game as well, we're going to see that chemistry from Johnson's team, and we've seen that throughout this whole first half. Sam Newman, and Johnson linking up pretty, very well. We, we said that pre-game, we've seen it on the court. Newman's been throwing that ball around pretty well. He's, had, he's got some pace on those passes. It, like, I'm not sure how their hands are even how to control that ball when, when the ball is flying around that fast from some of those passes. These guys, they're pretty talented to be able to keep it under control while moving at those speeds. Yeah, yeah, very talented. And, uh... I mean, Kai Walker as well, last year's dunk contest winner, throwing down a dunk uh, in, I, I think it was the first quarter that he did that. Yeah, I accidentally missed that. The uh, pizza arrived and I was uh, <laughs> scoffing my face and, and 
and then I had, had a big cheer and it was Kai Walker there. Definitely and his home to... court is doing a massive dunk. Yeah, he was, he was definitely showing, you know, why he was chosen as a judge for this year's yeah. dunk contest. Yeah, because <laughs> he, he did show it himself. There's been a few boos when the, the, some of the lads haven't gone for a dunk. Some of them have gone for a layup instead. We want to see those dunks. And the crowd has been booing, the DJ has been booing, the, it's even the teammates have booed when sometimes a dunk hasn't, hasn't gone ahead. So I think that will probably maybe be in their hard time team chat as well, going, hey, go for those dunks, because that's what we're here to see. Absolutely. And and also something we mentioned earlier about Hemel Storm and Worthing Thunder on, on Team Johnson. It's yeah. kind of that, you know, that big split with the two Hemel players and the three Worthing players. Well, they're leading 55 uh, 47, so yeah. I guess any worry about them maybe not getting on so well. Yeah. That, when, that when, that that when that five was on the court, they were unstoppable. There wasn't any stopping them. John said that as well in the commentary. You know, when those five are on the court, there's almost no one in, in the, there's not another five in this league that could stop them or even in the British Basketball League they would go well in there so you know when that five is on the court it's going to be hard for Wheelands team to stop them but it's an all-star game rotation is happening so Wheelands team they're in with a shot, in with a shot. what do you think might happen in the second half you think Johnson will put the way with it again or I think Team Wheeler will keep it tight. I, I hope Team Wheeler comes back a bit, but I can see Johnson's team running away with it a bit. If, if they come out with their starting five again, it, they could start to fill a gap, and then maybe they will start having a bit of fun again and the gap will close again. I don't I don't think it'll be a blowout, but I can I can't see I can't see Johnson's team losing this. No, no, yeah, I'd have to agree with you there, but like you said, I, I really do hope that Team Wheeling continue to make it a big game, big close game. Yeah, so we yeah, are just a couple of minutes left. We've had the, all the kids back out on the court, showing what they're made of again. It's, they've been here all day since about one o'clock, throwing basketballs around, cheering on all the men and women. I uh, don't know if there's a ball here that isn't signed now, but everyone's been getting their, their basketballs signed. So it's been pretty good. Players are back out warming up. This is two minutes before the second half begins. But yeah, what a show it's been the whole day, really. It's been pretty awesome. Yeah, it's been fantastic. We were speaking earlier about how Solon won the, um, you know, the award for best game day experience for the WNBL. Yeah. And I mean, they're showing that today because so many great supporters. I mean, granted, some of these people might be coming to the around the country. First off, we're in the commentary box here, and I swear I think the crowd, the uh, the viewers have just seen me scoff a pizza. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. That's why I sat down. <laughs> it's camera. fine. <laughs> However, it's been a great first half. Absolutely, <laughs> Team Johnson leads it 55-47. It's been entertaining. The crowd have gone. Oh, But it's been a, a very hey, entertaining first half, and as you said, we'll do it. before we went to a break at the half, it all promises to be a really hey. thrilling hey. conclusion to what has been a really great day of all-star basketball. 
think what we're going to see now, we're going to see the competitive juices of these guys come out. Like they've had their fun in the first half. Mm. At the end of the day, all of them want to win, and I think we're going to see some high competitive. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Just going to say the um, group chat as well. It looks like it's a Hemel Storm party. <laughs> Oh, grief. Keep the comments coming. It's great to have you all on board. And whoever you're following, if it's a player, if it's a team, wherever you are across the world, get your comments in. Let us know where you are, what you're doing, how you're watching this game, except for uh, Aaron Ryan, Seth Suave. <laughs> Here is... I'm kidding. Get your comments in, guys. Here is Gademi to start the third for Team Whelan. Down eight. Make that five. As your captain, As your captain, coming up captain you Whelan it. comes good for, for three points there. And John Whelan, you know, had a long conversation with him at the start of the year. Just says he's, in, he's back enjoying basketball a little bit more. No disrespect, of course, to his playing days in the British Basketball League. But, you know, mixing work and basketball is, is never easy. And he had to do that himself. Uh, working in... Uh, in Manchester, living in Warrington, and obviously driving to Bradford Dragons training twice a week. So it's tough for him, isn't it? But he's, he says he's enjoying his time with the Dragons and he's enjoying being back in the National League. And it's just another example of this league growing. Mm. We've got players of Jordan Whelan's calibre um, competing on a weekly basis. It's fantastic to see him being in this all-star event. There's that Newman Johnson connection yep. on the backdoor cut. And there is Whelan again. Did you see on the first play where Orlan was uh, guarded <laughs> by Gademi? Gademi's arms went straight up. He's not falling for that. <laughs> Johnson off the back iron with his three. Taylor Johnson gets another bite of the cherry. Round the back pass. Finds no one but Seth Hall on the other side of the bench. Taylor Johnson five for ten right now. Five for eleven, excuse me, from the field for his uh, 15 points. And Johnson steals it off Gademi. And now Johnson off to the races, and he lays it up and in. And Sam Newman nearly stole it off the inbound. Just scores so efficiently, Taylor Johnson. Leading all scorers, 15 points. He's going for that MVP again. Here is Jackman. Jackman decides not to go inside. Pulls up for three and connects. Two players away now from everyone scoring. Josh Gademi and Seth <laughs> And, and there's Jordan play. May from downtown. He was joking with Dan Watts um, before the game about in the university competition they had. Dan Watts pretty much face guarded Jordan the whole game. And he said he was looking forward to a bit more space today with the other, <laughs> talent, with the other talent on the floor. Here is Cracknell. May. Whelan. Sort of half-hearted defence from uh, Taylor Johnson oh, yeah. there. Thought we had Gademi's points there. Yeah. Even Taylor Johnson wants Josh Gademi on the board. Here is Newman. Johnson. Play a little bit more methodical here. Tend to shoot for Taylor Johnson. Taylor Johnson, a step back three over. May hits it. That's the exact spot. He had a four-point had a four-point play here against Solon. Cracknell responds in kind. Right back at him. Now it's a case of let's see what you've got. Here is Arasol. Will he respond? Decides to kick it to Abdul inside. Abdul to Arasol. Arasol nice with fake. the runner. Nice fake. Here is Cracknell. Cracknell a three. That's off the back iron. May Thompson with the board and fouled by Newman, who didn't look too impressed. Well, another, does he ever look impressed? another, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> another veteran play from Raheem May Thompson. And you know, we talk about Sam Newman having a, a great season, led the league in assists with uh, just over seven assists a game and averaged 12 points. And one one thing that you know, we've not mentioned with with Hemel and with Sam Newman this season, one of the most underrated guards but actually deaf in one ear as well. So a lot of the plays that are run for him uh, have to be hand signals. And that just illustrates the skill set that Sam Newman actually has. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people would see it as a sort of a detriment to his play. He, he 
it doesn't bother him. He, he just gets on with it. Yeah, so a lot of the uh, a lot of the plans that Drew and I had at the beginning of the year, one of the key things we wanted to make sure all our players had a signal, um, which made sure two senses were ticked off, mm. uh, a sight and a sound. So it helped Sam and helped the rest of the guys as well. Would explain why he ignored me in Manchester. <laughs> if that's the reason you want to go with, we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm, I'm, do you know what? I, I, I'm not going any further there. <laughs> here is Mike. He's giving me a lift home, so I've got to be nice, got to, be nice to him. Okay, is here fun. is Walker. Oh, I thought we were about to get a second one. It was good defence from Cracknell, much to the fans' disappointment. Yeah. I think they wanted Should Walker. The yeah, I think they wanted uh, Walker to elevate and detonate, but. Here is Johnson under the basket over Cracknell, a turnaround on the follow. Kai Walker, again. Offensive balls. Kai Walker is battling, and there is huge Johnson, runner. a huge runner off the glass. Rainbow-like floater for Taylor Johnson. <laughs> He's moved to 22. 22 points for Taylor Johnson. Well, I can now say that no player in rebound all-star history has won back-to-back all-star. MVPs. I can now say that as it's the second annual. Yes. So Taylor Johnson might win four MVP trophies this season. He's certainly in line for one. Gudemi nice. rattles in a mid range yeah, jumper. There's Gudemi's two points. Just needs Seth Hall now. Get to Seth Hall. So now, so now everyone from Team Whelan has registered a field goal. Arasol. Arasol, <laughs> that came off Troy Cracknell's foot in a in a big way. What's incredible is it's a sellout crowd, but there are actually still people still coming back and coming in, which is absolutely phenomenal. And a few of the uh, <laughs> is that, players. Is that Chris on security now? <laughs> <laughs> He's done all the jobs Chris today. is yeah. Chris is actually a doorman. <laughs> Give that guy an SIA license. Here it is. <laughs> Olerin loses the ball, <laughs> as does Walker. <laughs> Here we go. Seth Hall's on the floor. This is what we wanted. So Seth Hall and Ronald Blaine come in. Arasol and Newman will take a seat. So for those of you that are not aware, you are going to be made aware. Seth Hall is the only player that has not registered a field goal or a point in this game so far. So once Seth Hall gets a, off and running, that's everyone accounted for. Blocked by Blaine off the uh, layup attempt from Cracknell. Good sportsmanship there from Blaine and Cracknell acknowledging that. I'm sure Seth will come up good soon, Seth Hall. He's an elite scorer for uh, the Hoods this year. It was a key part of their offense. Ran the show, hit big shots when needed. And here he is. a matter of time. Here he is on the ball, but gives it up. Here is Blaine. He's open. Blaine to Johnson, oh, the up oh, and under. Oh, oh. That was pretty. And he's cheering to the crowd. Love that it. got the fans on their feet as Cracknell goes the other way. I can honestly say I did not teach him that. <laughs> <laughs> it's got nothing to do with me, that Blaine. Come on, let's get set for that. Your, your key was the uh, the corner three pointer, wasn't yeah. it? There's Blaine. I my foot on the line, so we gave it to you. <laughs> Here is Whelan. Whelan driving at Hall. Whelan going inside, count it, and a foul. Two captains, back-to-back -back plays. Jordan Whelan, who averaged 21 points on 44% shooting for the Dragons this season. Of course, actually a former Manchester Magic junior back in the day. Played 35 minutes a game as well. Yeah. Five seasons in the British Basketball League. Three of those were for the Manchester Giants. And the... The brother of Patrick Whelan, who plays, of course, for the Leicester Riders. I think they're playing right now. They are playing right now against the Bristol Flyers, yes. Shameless promotion when this game is going on. <laughs> <laughs> As a whistle has gone, Elijah Bailey of the Loughborough Riders going back to the foul line for Team Johnson. That's a second foul on he's Jordan given Whelan. He's given it baseline. Oh, he's given a baseline. Everyone was getting ready for foul shots there, but OK. <laughs> this is the game we wanted, though. It started off very heavy scoring for Johnson. Whelan are back now. Here we go. Oh, well, <laughs> Olerin did not want Kai Walker to dunk that home, so Walker with the fake and the score. 
Jenkins, Harrison. Of course, Harrison, a two-time rebound all-star. Oh, nice see Walker, there he is again, dude. And, yeah. keeping, the, keeping the ball alive. Johnson got the ball. He could have easily have lost that. Fair play. Kai Walker. If there was an unsung hero award in this uh, all-star game, he'd probably be a front runner for that as well. Here is Hall. I think the fans, yeah, the fans <laughs> want go. it as well. Hall with the oh. layup misses it. <laughs> Come on, Seth. Seth Hall now zero for six from the field. Jenkins a three. That won't bother Seth though. He right. recognizes that not shot will come down. And pointing right in your direction as he hit that as well. Oh. And at the other end, Elijah Bailey from downtown. What have you been saying to Jeremiah Jenkins? <laughs> <laughs> Cracknell a three. They're all flying in. This is what we wanted, the crowd again. And a steal from Ollerin. He'll spot up for three. And the cold streak. Here we go. Hits, and Shoot there it. is Hall. <laughs> Shoot it. Come on, Sam. We're getting all excited. What's going to happen? I've never known a commentator to be so <laughs> wanting a player just to score. I might text Dan. It's a three-point well. game as well, actually. So what we want? Yeah. Blow this and a blowout. <laughs> Seventy-six, seventy-three, and there's Jenkins. It's the summertime. Well, it's getting there. It's a sunny day in Southampton today. Here is Jenkins again. Nine on the shot clock. Pretty sure this is going to. Oh, I was expecting that to go up. The nice. extra pass. Wheel and a three. Big rebound for Kai Walker. And here comes Taylor Johnson. Taylor Johnson almost went round the back, but lost the ball. Here is Pinnock, the lob. Ollerin couldn't finish. Hall, yes. Hall will put up a get three it. and yes. get it. <laughs> and the fans happy. on their feet. <laughs> Seth Hall with a three. It was only a matter of time. Jenkins connects at the other end. So now everyone is at least registered a point. The two Reading players leading it for Whelan. Cracknell on 19, Jenkins on 17. And here's the man on 24, Taylor Johnson. Here's Walker. Oh, nice pass. Walker looking for Blaine. Blaine wanted it to go. Of course he did. <laughs> Has that wry smile on his face as well. He knew that was uh, not his ball, but he was challenging Tim Brown, the referee. <laughs> Johnson off the floor a bit now. I'm expecting Bailey and Seth to try and take over the scoring responsibilities for Johnson. Here is Jenkins. Jenkins feeds Gale. Ollerin all the way and misses the dunk. <laughs> Bailey. And Bailey goes all the way. And Elijah Bailey, who's really got after it in this game, 12 points so far for Elijah Bailey off the bench. Only played 10 minutes so far, and he will go to the foul line. 156 remaining, and that's a third foul on Thames Valley's Victor Olleran. As Elijah Bailey makes the first. And of course, uh, former Loughborough assistant coach and now Div 3 head coach. Of course, one coach of the year, Liam Jefferson, in attendance today. <clears throat> Here is Gale. Gale driving. Here is Ollerin. Ollerin with the floating layup, you can say. Bailey's feeling it now. Bailey in two minds, though, whether yeah, to go for the three or to drive. Ball. Hall. And he's got his abilities, though. He's right to he's right to have that scorer's mindset. Oh, Pinnock got excited there. Yeah. <laughs> As did Pinnock. Here is Ollerin, a three. That's long, and here comes Poorman. Poorman driving, feeding Walker for two. Jenkins. Jenkins down the lane. <laughs> Cheering Zach Powell, his Reading and teammate. Zach Powell, yeah, right there, courtside as Seth Hall misses the oh, three. Nice of course, Zach Powell in the dunk contest earlier. 53 oh, nice. seconds left in the third. Bailey, Guy <laughs> Walker. 
five on the shot clock. Blaine off the back iron. And Pullman collects and scores. <laughs> Jenkins going to run the shot clock down. He's going to go for a quick one. Well, there's, 12, there's a 12 second differential between shot clock and game clock. Here is Pinnock. That's going up. Andre Gale a three. It is Dre Day here in Southampton <laughs> for Andre Gale. You've been waiting for that, have you? <laughs> My good friend Adam Masters was the originator of that. Okay. I have to let him take the oh, plaudits oh, and Elijah straight. Bailey. Six seconds left. Out of his mind. Final seconds of the third. Gale. Oh. They all want a piece. <laughs> Jenkins, Ollerin, they all wanted it. <laughs> Right by the Reading fans section as well. Matt Johnson right front row with a shaking of his head. He wasn't happy with that. But either way, it's all to play for in the fourth period. 88-83, a good third quarter for Team Whelan. They actually took that 33-28. to 28. So not too bad. In fact, actually, they haven't taken that 33 because the... <laughs> The live stats is not updated, but they have taken that by a good margin. So all to play for in the fourth quarter. And Taylor Johnson leading all scorers with 24 to the players. Elijah's going to go one-on-one on one every time he leading. gets the ball. Well, they're gonna keep and he's not going to pass unless he gets stopped. To showcase what they can do. Right? So stop him. Come on, young fella. Take your job. I know it's an all-star game. <laughs> take, take, take one. Oh. Take one. He'll get pulled out. Well, All thankfully, right. they're, they're not, not actually showing, showing it right now, so now. otherwise... Okay, OJ's going to look to make oh. something happen. The table's going to keep cutting. We've got to talk it up the whole time. All right, let's go. So if you've joined us on the Rebounds Basketball YouTube channel, welcome everyone. Great to have everyone on board today celebrating the best of the NBA. <laughs> Great to be in a bank holiday. Who knows what could happen? Great to have fans from all across the country, from Reading, from Bradford, Manchester, and uh, the infamous Let's Go Storm, <laughs> run by a good friend of mine, Fraz, watching on from home as well. And it says here that you're bossing it on the co-coms, so at least you're someone, at least someone helping. loves you. You're helping me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I need all the help I can get. Right here is Newman. See that, Arasol. See that Newman behind the back there, John <laughs> Bunnell. If every turn the ball over on a behind the back, John Bunnell find him five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Only if he turned the ball over, so he stopped doing it as the season went on. <laughs> John Bunnell, who I think is now back from his holiday in Spain. He's probably on another one. He's probably, yeah, I was going to say, he probably is having another one, isn't he? <laughs> With a good friend of mine, Graham Hiscock. Oh, wow. As Bailey Crab Bailey, Bailey of three. Another one for Elijah Bailey. 20 points He's going for the Loughborough Riders star. Only four points behind Johnson now. Jenkins. Gale. Gale stolen by Jackman. And away comes Arisol against oh. the much quicker Jenkins. Bailey's going to pull that. Bailey a three. Oh, oh nearly got it. Feast. Abdul. Feast is going to pull that. <laughs> well, if He's right to shoot that, though. What, he yeah. made five last year? Five, yeah. five three points, 34 points. He's a good three-point shooter, yeah, Fees really Abdul. 35% for the season. Ah, Hollerin up and under. I had the pleasure of coaching Afis at the University of Hertfordshire for a bit. He was an absolute pleasure to have around and helped us get to where we are today. So very grateful for his service. Abdul Newman. Back to Abdul. Six on the shot clock. Here is Newman. Running out of time. Yeah, yeah got a dance here and Jackman misses the, the runner. Here is Harrison. Jenkins straight away for three. Ollerin with the <laughs> offensive rebound. Gale a three. Right now, Team Blue getting all the looks they want. Ollerin again. 
and Jackman with the rebound. Orlan Jackman, who averaged nearly a double-double last season. 16 points, nine rebounds for Worthing. And uh, had 18 points, 14 rebounds in the playoff final against the Storm. That's another caliber player that we have in this league that we should be very proud of. Mm. Someone like that competing for, our, for Worthing Thunder on a weekly basis. And fans get to see that guy in, in our league. We should enjoy it. Absolutely. Whilst we have it. Commonwealth Games gold medalist in the 3x3 competition in Birmingham last summer. And he's actually promoting the 3x3 oh. as a turnover there. Chase Harrison couldn't quite find Andre Gale. And as said, though, Orlan Jackman promoting the 3x3 tournament and the 3x3 brand alongside. Um, many players for or many people alongside for Basketball England and going all across the country as Afis Abdul puts in a three and a header from Andre Gale to Victor Ollerin. <laughs> but yeah, the transformation for Orlan Jackman from the traditional five and five <coughs> on five to three x three and now really going and promoting it is absolutely fantastic and of course, it is coming to 3x3 season now with, with the off-season. Many players will be taking part. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Team Willen need to be a bit careful here. Johnson got up by uh, 12 points, not long left. Need to make sure they stay in this game. Absolutely. The momentum is all with Johnson at the moment. A second foul on Reese Pinnock, so... Elijah Bailey again at the line. Both, both coaches have got their captain sat on the bench. They'll probably finish the game. So let's see when they come back on the floor. Should be a nice end to the All-Star game. Yeah, well, both, uh, <coughs> both captains have been here pretty much the entire day, taking in all the action here at the Solent Sports Complex. And another turnover for Team Blue this time, as Jeremiah Jenkins couldn't hang on to the pass right in front of Team Johnson. One thing I am looking forward to when this uh, wraps up is the on-court mics. Of course, uh, a few coaches and a few players are all mic'd up and okay. there'll be the results on the <laughs> rebound uh, social media pages. That should make for very interesting viewing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that, actually. <laughs> so what, Ben Stanley's wearing one right now? Yeah. I think Ronald Blaine's got one. If Ronald Blaine's Ronald wearing Blaine, one. If Ronald Blaine has <laughs> one, then, oh, goodness help us all. <laughs> Dan Watts, I think, has one, but the beard is kind of hiding it. <laughs> it's probably in the beard. <laughs> Here is Jenkins driving at Newman. Inside to Gudemi. Jackman rebounds. Here is Abdul. Abdul to Jackman, and the Worthing 1-2 punch connects. I think if Whelan failed to score in this possession and Johnson ran another one, I think Ben Stanley might need to call a timeout here. Well, that's a 14-point game, yeah. Just so calm things down. Harrison. And Pinnock misses the three. Another rebound for Jackman. He's bringing Cracknell on instead. Bailey wide open for three. And that's off. And Jenkins with the rebound. So Stanley, Here is Stanley, rather than calling a timeout, is actually trying to bring all his big guns back on the floor. And here comes Taylor Johnson. And Taylor well. Johnson, yeah, right on the money. <laughs> Taylor Johnson will come in. And Ben Stanley putting on his big guns, as you say. Raheem May Thompson. Troy Cracknell and Jordan Whelan will check in momentarily. Abdul and a foul. I think it once he was going for the spin, you could sense that Abdul wanted the dunk, but uh, instead was held on to for dear life, and he still finished. And that's the risk Whelan had on the floor. They had a bit of a smaller lineup, both Orlan and Afis were on the floor. Kademi's guarding Orlan, so, some, so a smaller guard would have to guard Afis. Mm. And they exploited that mismatch there and got the M1. But they've gone back bigger now, so Cracknell, Whelan, Thompson and Kademi much bigger lineup to potentially finish off the game. I don't think anyone's in tr foul trouble, uh, apart from Olorari, who's sitting down. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's on sitting four. Down anyway. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Here is Arasol. There's so many things I've had to bite my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey, an yeah, offensive foul, foul, I think, is going to be called. Or has it been called? It has, yes. <laughs> I'll try Arasol. Johnson. Having a joke with Elijah Bailey, of course, uh, Arasol, a former Loughborough man himself. 
See, Taylor picked up Cracknell there. I think about two months ago, he'd never have done that. He would have left him on the floor. <laughs> well, with 5.55 remaining, and it is 101.87 in favour of Team Johnson. Here is Gudemi putting the moves on Abdul. I'm sure a few of these boys have got MVP honours in their mind as well. We've got Taylor on 24, Elijah Bailey on 23, and Cracknell on 19. Gudemi for three in the corner, and Troy Cracknell had an open lane there as well, but decided to pass it out. Abdul to Johnson. Abdul the three. And Jackman, another rebound. Here is Johnson under the basket and gets it to go over Whelan. Here is Cracknell, straight away for three, money. Oh, Troy Cracknell's come to play today. Troy Cracknell now on 22 points. Arasol for three. And Gudemi rebounds. Here is Cracknell. Cracknell again, again. <laughs> 25 for Troy Cracknell. And Ben Stanley's just cancelled his timeout. <laughs> that's all you needed. Well, that's a 10 point game. You know, it's still all to play for. More than four minutes left. Jackman putting the moves on Gudemi. Jackman backing him down. Good defense from Josh Gudemi. Arasol a three. And away again come the Rockets with that man again, Troy Cracknell. Will Dan call his first timeout if they score again, Will? Well, the defensive player of the year, Andre Arasol now marking Cracknell, but Jordan Whelan now hits for three. Come on, Dan, call that timeout. Let's have some fun with a play. <laughs> That's all you want, isn't yeah, it? it? <laughs> and pink to win, obviously. Here we go. Johnson a three. Taylor Johnson going a little cold at the moment from the field. Orlan Jackman at the top. Here we go. Ball bag around. Another stop for Team Blue. Whelan. Right. Oh. And Jermaine Thompson <laughs> couldn't hang on to it. I think he thought about letting it in before he actually caught it. I think, yeah, I think he thought that Jordan Whelan was going to shoot the three, and I don't think he was expecting the pass. <laughs> As Ronald Blaine checks back in, Hafiz Abdul takes a seat. 3.46 remaining in this game. Johnson, quick change of pace, and here is Blaine, a mid-range J, that's money. Jordan Whelan putting the moves on Blaine, goes right past him, misses the layup, bit too much English on it, he wanted a foul. <laughs> Bailey, round the back, Jordan Whelan looking for a cheeky steal, and I think that was a travel from Johnson, but a slight bit of worry there for uh, assistant coach Michael <laughs> Darlow there, even though it is the off season. Yeah, we've got four months, he can recover. <laughs> Hopefully in those four months he can get a haircut as well. <laughs> there was a joke that uh, went on social media that he should become an official ambassador for Slazenger. <laughs> of course, he's been wearing Slazenger armband, uh, headbands all season long. And he's wearing one today as well. Yeah, Hemel, Pullman inside. Hemel's local JJB. <laughs> those sales went up quite a lot. Sports Direct will thank him later. Has a time out has been yeah, sorry, called. There are other providers, obviously. <laughs> I didn't think JJB were in business. I, think I, don't, even I know. don't know. I used to work for them as a kid. Anyway, That's probably not why they're in business. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> anyway, jokes aside, 256 remaining, and Team Johnson leads 107 86. It's been a game where the pace has quickened up quite a lot, but it's gotten a little chippy. And right now, it's starting to play. Absolutely, it's nothing, yeah, a lot of time. Biggest lead of the game was 21 points for Team Johnson. 
And with uh, the BBL playoffs still in, in action, it's great to see Plymouth uh, City Patriots guard LVC Dusha here assisting Ben Stanley today. Of course, Mark Elderkin of Team Newcastle unfortunately couldn't be with us today. So LVC Dusha, ambassador for Always Balling, has stepped in and it's great to see him here today. And Dan Watts just went to a 2-3 zone. <laughs> well, I'll be. Right and there's a zone again. here as well. It's a 2-3 zone here as well. As Bailey misses the three. Yeah, back to a man. Yeah, yeah. And now it's back to a man. I'm trying to get Taylor on a post up. Taylor wants the ball. Seven to shoot. Taylor on the spin. Runs into trouble. Ba uh, Blaine a three. Rattles it in. Shot Ronald Blaine. A clutch bucket <laughs> at this stage for Ronald Blaine. Inside, beautiful pass to May. Nice Pretty pass from Jeremiah Jenkins. And a great finish under pressure from May. Johnson, a tough shot, and Elijah Paley will go to the foul line, joking with Troy Cracknell, who commits his first foul. Troy Cracknell, 25 points. Is he going to miss the second one again? So he stays on the floor. He's got MVP honours up for grabs. A lot of MVP candidates, you have to believe, actually, right now, with uh, the one-two punch of Reading with Jeremiah Jenkins and Troy Cracknell. Should Team Blue get the job done? But right now, it's looking like Team Johnson is getting a bit comfortable, and Taylor Johnson has 26. Elijah Bailey has 25. And an outside bet, maybe, is Orlan Jackman, who has 13. Final two minutes. All the way was Cracknell, misses the layup. Great defense there from Kai Walker. Here is Blaine, big three, gets it! Ronald Blaine from downtown. And that's a clutch bucket, a dagger bucket. As Jenkins goes all the way, on the follow, May Thompson. Out of time. Now for the second straight rebound All-Stars game, both teams have hit the 100 mark. And the ball goes out of bounds. And it will be a Team Whelan ball. Is Dan going to use a timeout today? <laughs> he didn't use one in the first half. He didn't half. use one didn't in the first. In the <laughs> I don't think he's going to need one now. He's sitting there scratching his beard. He's fine. <laughs> I think he... Uh, he just wants these players to have fun. Obviously, he wants you know, the game to be competitive have, and to win it, but uh, I think... Uh, <laughs> he's just told he's just told Kai Walker to face guard Jordan May. <laughs> Inside to Whelan. Whelan gets it to go under pressure from Walker. Jordan May's having flashbacks. <laughs> Less than 90 seconds remain. Johnson to Walker inside to Pullman. Is that Solent connection? That Solent connection in full flow here as we enter the final minute. Nice. And, and give it? May goes all the way and it counts. It's just too late, I think. Bit of a continuation a of play late. and Jordan May goes on to nine. That's a first foul on Kai Walker. But it looks like back-to-back -back successes for Team Johnson, who was repping the blue last year and is now repping the pink this year. Of course, had 37 points last year. It's not quite that amount this year. He's, get, he's trying to get the ball. <laughs> he wants the ball, there though. Go. There it is. And there it is, he's got it. And he's, <laughs> Jeremiah Jenkins tried to foul, but Jenkins, but uh, Johnson puts it in anyway. That could be his MVP right there. Him and uh, Elijah Bailey having a little contest. Elijah Bailey is uh, on the bench. I don't think he'll take any further part now. <laughs> I think from the time you said it to now, I don't think Dan Watts has actually stopped stroking his beard. <laughs> I'm just jealous. I will never <laughs> have anything like that. 
So a first foul on Elias Pullman. Here is Jenkins nice driving take. all the way. That's nice tough. Ball. Unfortunately, didn't get it to go. Here is Walker. And Walker keeps his dribble alive. Taylor's going up. And <laughs> Taylor Johnson <There> again. <laughs> Takes him to 31. 31 points for Taylor Johnson. Whelan from way outside. <laughs> well, they're all having fun now. Elias Poorman round nice the back. Oh, and there wow. is Johnson. That could be playing the game right there. That was <laughs> nice. Whelan again from way outside. Cracknell with the offensive board. Goes for the corner three. <clears throat> is the ball going to be dribbled out? I doubt it. There's I doubt it as up. well. Seth Hall. And <laughs> but Taylor Johnson will say thank you. I'll take that and hit another. Three. And Jenkins with the final possession. In and out. And that ends the rebound all-star game for the men and for the day as the team Congratulations to Team Johnson on their win. They defeat Team Wing 126 to 120. Every ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you've been an amazing crowd. We hope you've had an amazing game. Two short number from the last season. A deserved win for Who the MVP is. An entertaining but, you know, good natured game, should we say. These are quite the uh, nail bites it was last year, but it's still one of the most high games. Good job, we've enjoyed that. High scoring and people having fun. You can by the sigh you just gave, you're another fan, right? No, I want to have one. But yeah, the team just had it. The team allegiances from the season have been put to one side. The fans came in and had some fun together, which which is great. And hats off to Chris. He's done a fantastic job. He's put on another great event, and he's made a lot of people have a good experience. Absolutely, and it's not a surprise, but Taylor Johnson has just been named MVP. So that is. Four MVP <laughs> awards <laughs> this season for the one, the only Taylor Johnson. I'm sure Rusty Johnson is back home in the States watching on very proud of what his boy has accomplished today. But what Kemal Storm have accomplished as well in, in a fantastic season led by Aaron Rye, Taylor Johnson. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thank you very much, sir. And, uh, Thank you. It's been a fantastic year for everyone involved. Thank you. Um, it's been an honour to be a part of Thank and you. to create history Thank with such a nice group of people and Thank a family that goes beyond the people that you see on the court is really nice to see. Only a certain, only a certain few will realise the amount of time and effort that people put into it and it's, it's so great that we could reward them. Absolutely and uh, we will grab Taylor Johnson in just a moment for a post game. I know Ray Apafuri is uh, trying to grab him. Taylor Johnson's a very hard person to attract when it comes to post game interviews. No one knows that better than me. But um, <laughs> But uh, as the kids now take to the floor and enjoy the basketball court before we uh, shut the place down, it brings an end to a fantastic day of basketball here at the Solent Sports Complex. And we've been treated to seven hours of fantastic basketball from start to finish. It's been absolutely magnificent today. It's everything we could have asked for. The, the three-point shootout, the dunks previously, the women's game, and then the men's game right now is everything an all-star event uh, should be about. And then it's great to see all these kids on the floor shooting right now, hopefully be inspired by what they've just seen. And I think also the credit needs to go to yourself. Oh, no, 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 no. And your team, <laughs> a huge thank you to you and your team for putting this on so everyone can be able to tune in no matter where they're from. So, and the Pro-Am as well. Mm -hmm. However, you know, Chris Hughes 
wanted to join Sam in you know, promoting the best of the national league. He's doing that with this rebound post game, okay, much like what Sam is doing. people make aware of what is going on in this country mm. and the opportunities fans have to go and watch high level sport um, they can they can literally go down and watch a very high level of basketball no matter where they live around the country absolutely and um, I'm trying to find where Ray is actually but you know for a guy that's wearing a, <laughs> yeah, a hat as big as him on the far baseline oh there he is yeah I see him hopefully we'll get uh, MVP Taylor Johnson in just a second comes. But um, I'm disappointed Chris didn't go on his tiptoes on that picture. <laughs> he crouched down. Why did you crouch down, Chris? He was, he was channeling his inner Alia Al Shabri. That's what he was doing. <laughs> so we are moments away, and the man with the hat, the legendary Rayak Pafuri, who will be in Division One next season, we hope, is with MVP Taylor Johnson. Take it away, Ray. We are back again, and I'm here with the legend himself. Emil Taylor Johnson, how are you feeling, man? I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. A little sweaty, but I'm feeling good. That was a lot of fun. So much fun. Talk to me. How, talk to me through that game, man. How, how did you feel throughout that, man? Oh man, I, I felt, I was confident. Felt like I did a good GM job picking a good team. And my team made me look really good early on. And then blue team, they got hot. They got back to us. It was a close game, um, but it was a lot of fun. Felt good. What was that like as a spectacle for, you know, British basketball? Right? Oh, it's awesome, man. Having the having some of the best players out here, the top players all in one place. Like that's competitor. That's like really cool to be around the best. And then it being after the season, an all star game, just so much more fun hanging out, having fun. And talk to me about a historic season for you guys. What oh. was that been like? It's been uh, amazing watching it from the sidelines. You know? Man, it's just starting, just starting to sink in a little bit now that the season's over. Um, just having a little time to reflect and really enjoy it. Um, so cool, such a cool thing to be a part of. And I'm really grateful that uh, the season went the way it did. Really grateful. Another MVP to add to your collection. What are you gonna do with this one? Oh man, that's that's cool. That's really cool. That's fun. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe try to get a shelf or something and <laughs> put it on, I don't know. Cool man, hey, always, always nice to see you man. MVP, Taylor Johnson. Appreciate it man. It's all good man, see you soon. Yes sir. So there we go, that's our event for today, and what a final game that was. Absolutely brilliant final game, yeah, lived up to expectations, what a way to end this absolutely awesome Rebound All Stars event. 126, 107, yeah, yeah. I was right, 126, 107. Big scoreline. Big, big, big scoreline, and yeah, really good. <laughs> yeah, just Really, really great thing to be a part of today. Yeah, sorry, just getting hit by basketballs that are flying around <laughs> everywhere. It's on but the no, first yeah. time today. No, but yeah, awesome. An amazing performance by everyone here. Johnson, he really he put the points up early and then was maybe a bit cold in the third quarter, but in the fourth quarter where it mattered where he had to come clutch, he started hitting, dropping threes everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And Troy cracked him, man. Yeah. What a player. I mean, yeah, he, he kept the Blues in it. He kept he kept Team Whedon's team right there in it to the end. And we, we said they closed the gap. It was a two-point game at some point. We, we said they wouldn't go away, but, yeah, they, they weren't able to just bring it back or, or take the lead at all in the game. But all credit to them, they still came out and played really well. Yeah, I think he, he, he really did a credit to himself and his team. Um, yeah, I mean, like I say, you know, uh, Team Johnson, full of Hemel players, full of Worthing players, so really should be quite understandable that uh, you know it was, you know, you know, it was their day and it was their win, but absolutely, you know, a great showing from all the players on the team. Yeah, hundred percent. I think Johnson summed it up in his interview. Then Ray, he said he was a good GM. <laughs> I think he picked him. I think he drafted and picked himself a good team to get the I, win today. Yeah, I don't I think, think he could pick a better team. Yeah, I think he thought a bit about the chemistry and he thought what he could do. But it was a great event today. Cheers to Chris and cheers to Sonar Events and that's us done for the year. That's you done for uni. <laughs> that's done for uni sweet. Yeah. So and that is our events for today wrapped up and well done to everyone involved. Cheers. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.